In recent years, sustainability reporting has become a very important part of integrated reporting. In addition to providing many benefits for businesses, the sustainability reporting come along with some challenges such as rapidly changing ecosystem. Many investors recognize that sustainability is a long-term goal that will define the business model and advance from limited practice among eco-friendly business leaders. Therefore, reporting sustainability data has become a crucial part of achieving certifications and gaining investors. This kind of reporting involves presenting the company's commitment to a sustainable global economy and can help organizations measure, understand and communicate their economic ESG performance and then set goals and manage change more effectively. The exact role that sustainability reporting plays for business can be different depending on factors, but the bottom line remains. There are some costs and benefits of sustainability reporting for business that will remain consistent. Meantime, the benefits of sustainability reporting come along with some challenges in the reporting process itself. Some challenges including the ecosystem of sustainability reporting is constantly changing. Then sustainability reporting requires a large amount of very meticulous data collection for accuracy and also the accuracy of information collected for creating a sustainability report is of utmost importance. IDX Channel reports. And to dig deeper about this sustainability reporting, we are honored to have Mr. Ilko van der Eden, the CEO of Global Reporting Initiative. How are you, Mr. Ilko? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for being here. It's such uh, an honor for us to have you as a guest in our studio. So before we start about the sustainable reporting, uh, let us know, please, how do you end up in this sector, this sustainability thing, and also how do you end up in Global Reporting Initiative? Ah. Well, it was in 1997, uh, no, uh, 2017 uh, that I was asked by the Global Reporting Initiative to support them with the drafting of the 2000, uh, 207 tech standard uh, as a subject matter expert. I was in those days a partner at PwC, responsible for the global ESG platform and chair of the tax policy group of Accountancy Europe. So my first uh, encounters with GRI were in drafting uh, and co-drafting a sector-specific standard, uh, in this case on tax. Um, so I joined the board in January 2020 mm. and then uh, was asked to take over as CEO in January 1st, 2022. Oh, this long journey before today, yeah? <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Okay, regarding about the sustainability reporting, they say sustainability reporting indeed has become a corporate imperative in Indonesia. Even the Indonesia Stock Exchange urged company to uh, write sustainability reporting for listed companies starting in 2021. Which writing sustainability report would require additional resources from companies and a lot of effort, I believe. What actually, what's in it actually for the company? Why should we report? So what's in it for the company and what's in it for investors? And then, of course, the uh, broader parts of society and, and the other stakeholders. Well, first of all, if you look at some of the risks that uh, sustainability related topics bring with them, in fact, you're dealing with longer term risk management. So what are the effects of climate change on your bottom line when you need to buy more uh, energy uh, resources in order to cool your products? What is about workplace safety and, and, and issues around social topics as disruptive factors in your production processes or anti-bribery policies that deal with uh, uh, basic risk management against litigations? So businesses uh, in this new real world where we live in, where these exposures are quite uh, and have increased quite significant, have to deal with them anyhow in order to mitigate those risks, which basically is a fiduciary duty of boards. If you are an investor, you want to be sure that the money you invested in an organization is safe and that the organization indeed takes care of those risks. Besides that when you take care of those risks, you can also see that certain production processes in your supply chains can be improved, so that will add value by itself. Looking at the other stakeholders, for example, your employees, staff, your suppliers, your clients, the communities we operate in, 
they're very interested in specific topics, stuff like uh, uh, equality, equal pay, safe workplace, communities you operate in, pollution, education, training programs, and so forth. So more than just one uh, specific uh, category of, of, of uh, uh, people are interested in these topics. So you cover more with a sustainability report than just sustainability for the own sake. This is actually in line with also the recent data where investors also uh, start considering the ESG report in Indonesia to uh, where they are going to put their funds in the company. So I think uh, you probably agree that uh, the ESG, the Finance Sustainability Report, is not only just a report, but also uh, such uh, indicators for sustainability for a company as a whole also in the future. You, you couldn't be more right. Uh, in fact, the report as such is, of course, the result of a set of transactions and events that happen before the report can even be made. So it shows the endeavors and the initiatives businesses take in order to indeed create a supply and value chain that is both stable and safe. Yes. And this creates more value for investors than if you wouldn't. So there's also a value behind its report. There's, well, a, there's a story about the company itself. We see more and more that our standards uh, are being used as, as nearly a roadmap towards improved risk management oh. on the specific topics, well, the 32 specific topics uh, that we deal with. Okay, so it's not just about ESG then, uh, it also linked to another like risk management like you've mentioned. The, the days that ESG and sustainability was seen as some goofy marketing thing mm. <laughs> uh, 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 to enhance your brand name, mm. they are over. Uh, sustainability and, and, and uh, keeping track of environmental and socio-economic uh, social governmental topics became now really an integrated part of business strategies. So you cannot see it lose anymore. And that's something that really changed over the last three, four years. And it's interesting to see a PwC a day before yesterday, mm -hmm. the Eco Spirit event, they published a report on the developments in sustainability reporting in Asia and in the 15 countries. And it appeared that uh, our standards are being used by 81% of listed company mm. in Asia, and that came in 2021 from 75%. So that's quite a steep increase. And if you take into account that our standards are voluntarily, mm -hmm. then that shows you that business has a serious commitment mm. towards sustainability. Oh, that's interesting. We'll further discuss about it, but please stay with us. Market Headlines will be right back. Welcome back to Market Headlines. It was interesting but from the uh, segment before. We have talked about how important the sustainability reporting, which are actually not just a goofy marketing brands at the company use, but actually uh, there's a lot of uh, more than we think that a lot of companies actually have been committed to it. Uh, from your perspective, actually GRI also, the, the framework uh, that GRI have has been used uh, by uh, companies in, in the world. From your perspective, how do you see the sustainably reporting practices in Indonesia compared to the other regions? Well, we have at this moment more than 11,000 multinationals that use our standards, indeed across the world. 78% um, of the listed companies over here use our standards, and that is pretty high, and it is uh, quite comparable with what we see in the Asian region, which is interesting because that's quite high. If you compare it with some other countries outside Asia, and then people sometimes have a perception that elsewhere things are always better than at home. <laughs> well, in this case, that's absolutely not true because the uptake of the GRI standards in the Netherlands, where currently our head office is, is not even 20%. So you are greatly out, uh, outperforming, uh, for example, the Netherlands. Um, the developments go into the direction that I think that we will see these amounts of users only growing for various reasons. First of all, because investors ask. Secondly, as we said, the risk managerial aspects. And thirdly, uh, the, the tremendous interest that society has in sustainability topics. 
Oh, that's quite uh, shocking for me personally, uh, listening that actually Indonesia is more than uh, what we think. In Netherlands, 20%, while Indonesia have 80%, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, 80%. So actually, Indonesia can we can we say Indonesia more concerned, more committed to it? We should not underestimate the efforts your business does in this field. Oh, great! So actually, what are the challenges in the company that the company would face in uh, producing high quality reports? In the end, it's all about data and transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, data. How do I get access uh, to the proper data I need to have to file the report and how do I validate them? And be aware, uh, much of the data is not only uh, uh, quantitative but also qualitative. It's about the narrative behind it. Uh, and uh, secondly, it is making the organization get used to work with the topics and manage the topics around sustainability. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of tools and uh, guidebooks and, and support can be provided on how to start on a project like that. I would advise everyone that's not yet a reporter to reach out to colleagues in the same industry that are there, what their approach was. They're always very keen to explain how they did it. From there, do an internal assessment on what your capabilities are. Take technology absolutely into account to ease up the work. Mm -hmm. and then start the, uh, uh, the change managerial uh, 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 topics you need to take, uh, training education, mm. uh, proper reporting, internal risk management and controls about the reports, internal audit to support, and the role of the external auditor when you, uh, when you uh, will have to uh, file your reports, oh. if you want external assurance. Okay, so it's not just about collecting the data, but also the reporter. To collect the data. Yes. Oh, so the GRI also provides not only the framework, but also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, training for the yes. reporters? We have a quite extensive training and education program, also online. Uh, you can reach out to our uh, support unit that can guide you through the first step to take. Uh, we are, of course, a not-for-profit organization. So we do not have any commercial interest in our advice and training activities. Otherwise then keep ourselves alive as an organization and trying to do good for, uh, for the whole planet and humanity. Ooh, interesting. So actually, about, uh, speaking about the uh, companies in Indonesia, we are also seeing that the trend in Indonesia, uh, that Indonesian companies are increasingly committing to net zero targets. Also, the government in uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Indonesian government targeted in 2050, we could reach that. Including the state-owned enterprises also. What kind of the role of sustainable reporting could play in achieving the net zero ambition? Uh, what's the link? Oh, how do you see this? Well, there are some people that say what gets measured gets done. Mm. There are others that say what gets measured gets manipulated. I think there's a truth in, in, in both of it. Uh, but what you typically see is that those organizations that do not report their endeavors in reducing a carbon emission get more questions out of investor communities and NGOs than those that do report. So by default, you see that a part of the accountability and transparency by itself leads to change. And if it were not that from the outside world push, you also typically see from the inside that once you start looking into a certain topic, mm -hmm. you start to rethink certain processes where you can improve them and how you can do things differently. Mm -hmm. So this, 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 this guiding principle of a, a specific topic like, uh, like carbon emissions is, is, is typical where you see organizations like, okay, so if I have to report this and I see now that my production processes works like that, then if I can reduce it by doing B, then let's start doing B. So mm. again, it's used nearly as a guidebook. Mm, as a guidebook. So it's one of the key success factors maybe for Indonesia to achieve the net zero emission? Uh, it would be very arrogant to say that it is the only factor, but it mm. is a contributor too. Do not forget innovation. Uh, uh, sustainable energy resources. I mean, reporting is just a tool and a part of 
the many steps we have to take to, uh, to get where we want to go. So speaking about um, decarbonization, uh, all of the commitments to decarbonization would require mobilization of resources. Yes. And also, of course, uh, quite cost a lot of uh, finance funds and something like that. And innovative financing products or sustainable finance are a big news items in Indonesia, actually, recently. How could sustainability reporting support the implementation of sustainable finance and vice versa? Ah. Well, uh, first of all, as the Brits say so eloquently, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> so if you want to attract certain uh, subsidies or certain loans from financial institutions, you have to validate that the steps you take in order uh, uh, to, let's call it, green up your production processes must be there. Mm. And you can only validate that by reporting. And reporting means you provide comparable data to those interested. With our GRI standards, you, you, you provide comparable data into the market. If there is no comparable data, then it's difficult to benchmark. If you cannot benchmark, you cannot assess risk. If you can't do that, a financial institution will not provide you with funding. What we also see is that those companies that take this serious and indeed do report, have lower cost of compliance while engaging with capital markets or financial institutions to get uh, uh, certain uh, loan facilities. So I have been a, uh, a head of treasury of a multinational. So this topic very much is to my heart. <laughs> and before we go to greenwashing, uh, 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 I think uh, this, is, this is something to take into consideration in investing in, in sustainability processes will lower your cost of capital. <clears throat> okay, so it's interesting. I'm actually uh, stunned with the which your answers, seeing that it's uh, quite more than <coughs> accurate, uh, seeing that a lot of uh, issues currently in Indonesia also uh, right now highlighted about the greenwashing. Yeah, but what we should not forget, it's the reporting is the nice part, but what's coming in front of it is basically the transformation of a global supply chain business model. Mm. We put more focus on things that are not so good for all of us, eh, for environment, plan, people, uh, and that needs a certain attitude. Yeah. And that is, of course, more important than the report itself. But the report itself validates the endeavors businesses do. And if we speak supply chain, there are many more actors and players in this field than just the reporting entity. Small, medium enterprises as suppliers, the manufacturers, education programs, accountants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, very interesting. We have a limited time. So what would be your key message, Mr. Ilko, for Indonesian companies who are about to embark their sustainability reporting journey? Uh, I would say sustainability reporting adds far more value to your organization and your shareholders than you may think. Many, many, many organizations went before you. There's a lot of benchmarking material and it's far less scary and costly than you may think up front. Okay, that's very amazing, Mr. Ilko. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope this, uh, our discussion today could have such, uh, bring such insight for you. And thank you, Mr. Ilko von der Eden as the CEO of Global Reporting Initiative. See you next time. Thank you very much for having me in the show. Okay, and viewers and the news close our market headlines today. The talk show close our market headlines today. Please enjoy our next program on IDX channel, your trustworthy and comprehensive investment reference. I'm KJ Deju. Have a nice morning.